In my last video, we finally painted the second gen Forerunner. And today, we're going to take that paint to the next level. I'm going to show you my method on wet sanding and polishing, what equipment I use, and some tips of things to look out for and what to avoid. And then, we'll look at the final result. Stick around. You may be asking yourself why the heck did he spend all his time achieving this nice, shiny paint job just to sand it down? Well, there's a few reasons. No matter how good of a job you do painting and where you paint it, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get some kind of imperfections in the paint. This can include dust, runs, orange peel, or other things. The idea behind sanding a new paint job down is to get rid of these imperfections. Now there are several ways to do this. I'm gonna show you my method on how to take this paint job to the next level. The techniques you decide to use will depend on the final result you're looking for. You can hear this called a few things, wet sand and polish, cut and compound, color sand and buff, or any combination of these. I'm gonna get this quarter panel ready to buff out. And to do that and get rid of some of the orange peel and imperfections, I'm gonna sand it down in three stages. The first stage I'm using is a 2000 grit sandpaper. This is a six inch disc. I'm gonna do wet sanding. That's gonna be on a DA. And I'm gonna show you all this. If you have any questions, everything I use will be down below in the description. Second stage is going to be a 2000. So why 2000 two times? They're two different types of sandpaper and you have to become familiar with the sandpaper that you use. We have a nice jet coming overhead right now. Um, this 2000 is super fine. I would say it's probably closer to about a 2500. So I'm gonna do a 2000 on the DA with the cheaper sandpaper. This one's a little bit better quality. These are all hook and loop. That's another 2000, but I'm gonna call that like a 2500. And my third stage is gonna be the 3M Trizac 3000. This stuff is super expensive. At the local auto body supply, this was, I think 12, 1250 a sheet. So the good news is it's super high quality and it lasts a long time. So the cheaper ones, uh, you don't get nearly as much use out of them, but the 3M 3000 Trizac, all the 3M Trizacs actually uh, do last a long time. So we're gonna hit it on three stages and I'm gonna show you how I do it. This is my six inch DA and we're just gonna attach the 2000 hook and loop so it sticks right on. It's imperative that this panel and this sandpaper is super clean. So we're gonna clean that off and get ready to sand. I have a clean microfiber towel and water in a spray bottle. A lot of people will use straight water. I actually put a few drops of soap in here. So this will be used to clean the panel and to lubricate the sanding disc when I'm sanding. So I just give it a quick spray. I've already wiped this down once, so this is the second time I'm wiping it down. And then I go over it. If you get one particle in your sandpaper while you're sanding, you can scratch the heck out of your paint. So just be very careful with this step and make sure it's clean and ready to go. So that's my second wipe down. My next step is I'm gonna actually lubricate the whole panel with the same solution, the water with a little bit of soap, and then I'm gonna lubricate the sandpaper. So since I've used this sandpaper on the previous panel, I'm gonna hold it actually vertically and I'm gonna lubricate it this way. This way if there's any particles in there, it's gonna wash it right down and not stain the sandpaper. I always give the sandpaper a quick feel too Sometimes you'll feel a little particle in there. And then after I do that, I give it a, a final. A few things I wanted to note as I do the wet sanding on this panel here. I'm not using a lot of pressure. The pressure is very, very light. I'm almost letting the machine glide over the paint right now. I also don't work in too big of sections. I try to stay in small sections uh, at a time and I go over those sections to make sure they're where I want them, and then I kind of move on. With wet sanding, you never truly know until you take the water away and see what you're left with. So you kind of have to go by feel um, and by intuition to figure out where you are, and then once you take that water away, you can see what the results are and how far more you need to go or if you want to stop at the point you're at. It's also critical to note that uh, unless you're highly experienced, you need to stay away from sharp body lines. And you can see that I'm actually staying away from some of the sharp body lines as well. Uh, I do change my technique as I get close to them. I don't want to go right to the body line, so I stay away from them as well. But I do come pretty close, and I have a specific technique that I've perfected over the years 
that has allowed me to not burn through the paint. You can burn through the paint pretty easily. Don't forget also that you're going to go back with a polisher that creates heat. So the sanding process and the compounding process will be removing paint. So if you go a little too far and you burn through the paint, you're going to have to repaint that panel right, again. The compressor's going in the back, so hopefully you can hear me. Next step, after I have the 2000 to where I think I want it, I'm going to check it and see if I need to sand it down a little bit more. I'm going to use a flexible sanding block. This is uh, a foam pad. It's softer on this side, harder on this side. Some people use a rubber squeegee. I've used those before. This is my favorite because it contours uh, with the body panels. No. So I'll just kind of take it in my hands like this, curve it, and let it fit around the body panels. All right, let me get uh, the camera in here so you can see what's going on. The orange peel is starting to come down. You can actually see the dull spots and you can see the shiny spots. The shiny spots are the lows in the orange peel. So we got a pretty good base right now. I can see right here, I wanna get it a little bit more. So I'm gonna hit it a little bit more to 2000. Don't forget that the first stage, whether you use 1500, 1200, 2000 depends on what your goal is. I'm starting with 2000, which is super fine. So I'm not gonna get a lot of cutting with the 2000. So I'm gonna take this down a little bit further before I hit it with the, uh, the, other, the finer 2000 and then the 3000. The other sandpapers will not get the orange peel out. Uh, it's just used to take care of the scratches to get them a little bit finer. So I'm gonna hit this a little bit more, get a little bit more orange peel out and then hit it with the other two stages of sandpaper. All right. So I have it, I don't know, this lighting probably won't pick it up, but uh, I have it sanded in three stages. I finished off with a 3000 and I just dried it off so I can observe the, um, the result in the orange peel and see if, it's, uh, see if it's what I want. And it is looking pretty good. So when I compound this, which I'll do right now, I'll, um, I'll get a factory finish, a factory style finish, factory style orange peel. Um, probably a little bit less, so it'll look, it'll look nicer than a factory finish. The 3000 leaves super fine scratches, so the goal now is to use a fairly abrasive compound. I'm going to use that on a wool pad. A lot of people use foam pads. You can use that as well, uh, but I'm going to use a wool pad. I seem to get better results with that, and um, we're going to compound this, bring a little bit of a shine to it, then I'll show you what's next. I have two different types of compounds. Uh, I'm gonna be using the V32 from Chemical Guys. It's a thick paste, uh, pretty aggressive. So I'm gonna use that. And then I'll probably hit a second pass with the compound. I'll use a 3M rubbing compound. Uh, I've had this for quite a while. It's usually a little bit tastier, but I think because it's old, it's a little uh, more liquid. So I'll use that. It's a little less aggressive than the V32. So that'll be my second stage of the compound. And then I'll do a polish, uh, but I'm not gonna do the polish yet. Let's do the compound first. Also, when you're doing uh, polishing, compounding, buffing, things like that, you have two choices for machines. This is a rotary. Uh, I would recommend you not use a rotary unless you have a lot of experience. You can burn through the, uh, the paint, the clear coat, uh, real quickly, especially when you have sharp edges like this. Um, you have to know, it took years for me to, to perfect my technique on using a rotary. But um, you can, you can try it. Use it on a test panel, make sure you're, uh, you're comfortable with it before you use it. it it's gonna go a little bit quicker with a rotary, but I'm gonna start with the rotary. I may end with the other, with the dual action, but um, right now we'll use this one. I'm gonna use a few squirts. Use like four dollops on there. And then I'll do a little bit right here. I'm just gonna work in small sections. If you take too big of a section, you're gonna have issues. Work the small section, make sure you get it right, or you can keep going back and forth on these big sections. So I could do like, I don't know, a section maybe from here to here and make sure it's right. So you wanna dollop it on, pat it on so it doesn't sling all over. I start on slow, to spread it.
That looks pretty good on the first pass. I may not need a second pass. In order to check to see if I need a second pass, I'm gonna use a wax and grease remover. Uh, this is just Mother's uh, CMX, and it'll get rid of the, um, the additional compound. So you can kind of wipe it and take a look. I see a couple spots down here where I have to hit with the compound a little bit more. This whole flat area looks real good. So I'm gonna leave that. Uh, I'll hit down here a little bit more, then I'll start to work my way around the rest of the panel. The next stage after I compound, I sand and compound this whole vehicle, I'm gonna go back and do a polish. A polish basically is, is like a compound, but it's instead of having like aggressive particles in there, it has finer, uh, has finer particles. So it fills in the swirl marks and the scratches left by the more aggressive compound. And then I usually finish with a uh, wax or a glaze, depending on what stage the paint is, if it's a new paint job or if it's paint that's been on the vehicle for a while. We went around the vehicle doing all the panels on the uh, three-stage sanding process. Then we hit it with the wool pad and uh, a heavy cutting compound. Now we're gonna do a finishing stage. So I did the wax grease remover. I took all the residue off for the compound. Now I'm gonna be using a cordless dual action uh, polisher. So this one will move in multiple directions so it'll spin and rotate. It's less aggressive than the rotary machine that I was using for the compound. And we're gonna be using a polish. <laughs> you can't see what it is, but this is actually a Meguiar's polish. I had some leaks in the container, so I had to mask it up, but really any good quality polish will do. This is the next step in taking care of any of the heavier scratches left behind by the compound. I'll usually do uh, some dollops of the polish on the pad here. This is a Hexlogic uh, black foam pad. This is a finishing pad. The other one I had was the orange one, Hexlogic, and that's a little bit of a heavier, um, a denser foam and that's good for compounding. This is good for polishing. Here's another angle here. My garage is getting a little packed from different jobs that I haven't put tools away for. Let me get the light on here, hold on. I'm happy with the progress. We do have some orange peel in there, which I wanted. I didn't want to complete, this is not a show vehicle. So, all right, so I'm gonna go around the whole vehicle. I'm gonna do the polish and then I'm gonna hit it with wax and grease remover. And then I'm actually gonna bring it outside once I get these door handles back in and do a light pressure wash just to get rid of all the compound and polish that are in the cracks, crevices, creases. Uh, you don't want that to dry or you're gonna have a problem removing it. I'm getting ready to do a little extra painting. The uh, emblems here, I have the uh, blue tape so I can get the uh, black painted there and also the black painted inside the headlamp bezels. All right, so I have the Forerunner pulled out here and uh, it, it was, I finished polishing this thing up a little while ago. It was probably a, not quite a week, but it's been sitting out and it's got some dust on it. So I don't know if it's gonna show the true shine or the true finish, but um, I do have a brand new grill, uh, which I'm gonna be putting in shortly here. And then I just showed you the bezels um, that we're going to paint. And then the valance here, which is uh, below the bumper, it's all dented in. So I have a new one of those coming as well. And let's see if the, um, if the finish of the paint will actually show, but it is compounded and polished. Came out real well. I have another door handle here too. This is what happens with older pieces. When I took all the door handles out, uh, one of the clips broke or one of the side pieces broke on the plastic. So I had to order another one of those. But just a quick recap on what we did after we painted the car. We did a three stage wet sand with the DA. And we started with a 2000, moved to a 2500, and then finally to a 3000 grit, which was on the 3M Trizac. We also 
We then hit it with a compound on a wool pad that was with a rotor machine. And then we hit it with the polish on a dual action polisher. So we still need to do a final wash and also do a final glaze. And this vehicle will be ready with the exception of a few parts to install. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Please leave any comments or questions down below. I will answer all of them. I have tons more video content coming out soon. So stick around and I will see you in the next one.